the speaker with us today. Okay, okay. Thank you. Kwame, please. You can make your presentation. Yes, yes, I am just uh, sharing my screen. Mm, uh... Oradaki arkadaşlar yardımcı olursa ekran paylaşım yapmak istiyorum ama. Doktor, okay. Yes, it is done. It is done. Ha, okay. Uh, can I uh, restart it one? It will be within half a minute, please. Okay. Doktor Beşir, please go. Okay. Is my screen visible, Professor? Okay. okay. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So uh, my topic is about the status of women and their socio-economic and internal security contribution during the Uthman period. Uh, I will go first uh, uh, step by step to the status of women, then their socio-economic uh, contributions, and later on the internal security contributions. So. Uh, first, I want to give a little brief, although uh, my uh, many professors and uh, friends have talked about the uh, Uthman Empire and its uh, uh, vastness. So I wanted to give a little brief uh, what we are going to do in through this presentation. So first, if you will see Uthman uh, Empire that it lasts more than 600 years. It was the one of the biggest empire in the world. And it uh, thrived between 1299 to 1922. Uh, and it was uh, uh, Europeans, Africans, and West Asia's most remarkable ruling entity. So by these things, we, are, we can get a little idea about the empire that where it was and what was its main focus. Uh, it was having the vast uh, varieties of culture, religion, and language. So we understand that it was not just Muslims were included or just one culture was included. It was multicultured uh, empire. So what we are going to discuss here about the status of women that first of all, I like to highlight about the legal system of Uthman and uh, the status of women in Islam, because the legal system which is in Uthman is mostly uh, inbuilt by the Islamic laws. So we will go in detail. Uh, first, if we will think about that, can a state with Islamic principles deprive its women or will it give more rights than other political systems? So we have to think about it while going through presentation, we will come to know inshallah. Uh, until there is one more point which I like to highlight about the lady status, which is the prospects from Western countries. So until 1970s, there were the Uthman harem featured women, but reality was different. There was not such a uh, vast research on that. Later on, the researchers have done some work on it. So first, uh, let us see about the women's status in Islam. If we will go through this slide, we will see in a brief that how much the woman is respected in Islam and how much uh, status, a uh, great status it has been given. So apart from personal, social and economic rights, we can see that women in Islam has various other rights. It is to that level that it becomes the way to Jannah for different people in their various stages. If you will see in these three hadiths that when she is born, she opens doors to her parents for Jannah. 
when she marries she completes half the deen of her husband and when she becomes a mother there is jannah beneath her feet so this is the status which islam gave to the woman so when we will go to the rights of women in islam uh, if we will go back that uh, it is the islam which gives the rights and dignity to women 1400 years ago islam came to uphold women's rights and elevate their uh, standing in society at the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when girls were buried alive but he came as a mercy for all the human kind as well as for that uh, that time and the ladies were saved by the uh, coming of islam so if we will see here number first the right to be honored and treated with respect if we will see as a mother so there is a hadith when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked about the about that who is who is the most deserving of my good treatment by one sahaba so he uh, repeated three times the mother while as fourth time he repeated father so first priority he gave to mother to be treated as uh, most deserving people and as a wife uh, it has been also mentioned in the hadith that the most perfect man in his faith is the one who treats his wife uh more excellently so here also it is showing that how much it is the respect given or it is related to the one's faith that how he treats a uh, lady a daughter and sister in case of a daughter and sister there is one more hadith by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whoever has three or three uh, three or two daughters or sisters and keep them in good company means appraise appraise them in a good uh, way he allah will give him paradise uh, in this regard so when we will see second uh, right to seek knowledge and education uh, in islam uh, everybody have this right and everybody have uh, the right to seek knowledge and to inherit any skills or pursue the knowledge seeking knowledge is a duty upon every muslim and he who imparts knowledge to those who do not deserve it is like who one who puts a necklace of jewelry pearls and gold around the neck of swan so this is also mentioned in hadith that uh, uh, it is not barred to anyone and it is not uh, just the property of men but it is to all and ladies are equal in it third right if we will see uh, right to equal just uh, in islam women have the same rights as male regarding religious practices such as prayer fasting and charity giving Uh, surely men and women uh, believe believe uh, it is uh, also mentioned in the quran in this ayah that where uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equating men and women in many conditions as same so if you will see this ayah there is every time uh, every time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about uh, men and women with different attributes and they are same and fourth is the, uh, the muslim woman has the right to work so we will when we will see the right to economic self sufficiency it is also given in islam so they have right to work they have right to inherit the property they have right uh, uh, to uh, have a legal contract and manage her assets financially everything so there is no difference in that way also if we will see the right to choose a spouse there is also given that right to lady that she can choose her spouse as per her wishes wish even though if uh, parents are choosing spouse but she have the right to accept or deny the spouse so these five rights if we will see these are, they are covering the main aspect of life even though there are a lot of uh, more but uh, they were the main five which i highlight here so that we can come to know about the status of lady given in islam so when we will come to the legal system of uthman uh time so as per the archive was 85% of uthman law was based on sharia and were used to create personal family family international private and public law procedures and 80% were penal laws uh, financial and other general principles so if we will see that the society the country the empire having the legal system embedded with 85% of sharia law uh, it is uh, sufficient to understand that the status of uh, women what can be there so i don't think there should be any doubt about their treatment to women uh, 
when we will go to a pre utman legal system what was embedded the, in that legal system there were two uh, things one was sharia law as i discussed the 85% of it was embedded in it and another was al urf and qiyas this qiyas and al urf was done where there was some situations in which they need to have some intellectual uh, substance to uh, caro a solution so by this there was sometimes the amir was saying uh, or he was coming with a solution or sometimes any imam was coming or king was coming so this qiyas and urf was uh, used as a second resource in uh, legal system so now what was the privileges that utman uh, woman was getting in pre modern time so first if you will see legal privileges she was having right to control that belongs to them and neither father nor spouse were allowed to utilize it without their approval so they were the full holders the full uh, owners of their property right to bring disputes before the local qaidi or what, what we will say in a judge so they were also uh, able to bring the cases to court as a man is allowed in most cases judge protects women legal and property rights in the uthman court system utilized by women for all walks of even judges have given many uh, judgments in which they protected their legal affairs also non muslim uthman this is very interesting that uh, even non muslim uthman women who were non muslim as we talked that it was multi culture multi religion empire there were some non muslim women also they were widely using qaidi courts because they have been regarded as more favorable in dealing with women's concern so their own courts were not dealing such a great uh, such uh, such clearly as the uh, uthman uh, courts were dealing with them so they were preferring to go to that qaidi court rather than theirs women have the ability to reject a match and before an agreement were widespread as they talk that they were having their right to have their choice of person to marry six if you see when it comes to dissolving an unhappy marriage uthman women had great freedom the legal standards might imply to terminate their marriage so even in divorce also they were having their right for divorce Uh, there was a customary for non muslims also in this that uthman women whose tradition did not allow divorce they convert to islam and then by this method they were getting free from that undesirable desirable marriage so in the in that time also uh, they were not having this privilege to get divorced whereas uthman women have was having women were not given hard work like commercial or earning duties due to care and respect in that uh, society there was care and respect even to animals we cannot talk uh, only that uh, women or men they were having to all so by this by this respect and by this care they were not given hard work they were also given choice in it if they like to work they can if not they cannot so here if we will take some examples of uh, western ladies uh, lady elizabeth carvan which was moving from uh, crimea to constantinople was based on her trip uh, during 1789 she wrote in her uh, this trip book she wrote that trip all and she made it as a book i she wrote that i think i never saw a country where women may enjoy so much liberty and free for all approaches as in turkey the turks conduct towards our sex means women are an example to all other nations so at that time also in 1789 she also appreciated the situation of women in uthman time uh, let's see parsi questioned that a typical picture of uthman women as cholesterol and helpless in the empirical harem she questioned it that what you are saying about this uh, she didn't accept it she uh, questioned about it that it is not real according to her book what she wrote in the book the empirical harem sultan's mother and other royal ladies were more powerful and prominent as they retired into their harems in the latest 16th century so they were uh, very powerful it was not just they are there as slaves and they were segregating women and having family affairs and doing other uh, works what were used in the state 
So when we go to property rights in that uh, architecture projects and infrastructure development had uh, by royal ladies. So they were also their a big hand was of that royal ladies to develop architecture projects and uh, infrastructure. So if you will take the example of uh, Hurram Sultans, uh, which she created the Istanbul Haskia Hurram uh, Kale, which is still standing in Istanbul. And there was a mosque, a soup kitchen, uh, women's hospital and bathrooms, which we guess in bathhouses. So these, uh, they were uh, many privileges given to them. Family landowners had a white, uh, female landowners have a vital role also in this in Timar system as my brother Shafa uh, talked before. And women in the Uthman economy has a prominent role as seen in their charity actions. We will see later on what they do in charity also. Uh, when we see business privileges, they were also able to have their businesses, their own businesses in silk winding and cotton spinning uh, were traditionally seen their domain. It was domain of ladies because they were more uh, handy on that uh, craft. They also prepared food steps and did small trades. Uh, they were also in agriculture and animal husband, husbandry. Uh, women from both the cities and countrysides were owning setups, uh, business setups and working together. So they were all like uh, men are doing. So when we see their role in Uthman state, uh, if we will see at, the, at that time when women were seen as a sign of witchcraft and seen in the West, a revolutionary was posting in Anatolia where Bajani Room uh, became the world's first women organization. So they were able to create their own organization under the Uthman empire. So this is showing that how was their status in Uthman empire and how they were able to contribute because of this uh, 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 privileges given to them. Bajani Room has played an important role in Anatolia moral and economic regeneration and was the uh, brains behind a massive andro in sector of religion, business, society, and education. So they contributed in all numerous works were created them by them, uh, schools, hospitals, whatever was uh, used in for public utility. If we will see their social economic contribution of the women in Uthman Empire, they had their role were also in agriculture, business, and social work. Uh, the, they were also having their part in war, peace, and textiles, home economics. So if we see no any area has been remained where they didn't participate in, and they were allowed to participate in, participate in it. Several instances illustrate that women in Anatolia were involved in commerce and operating business. As an example of Bursa, which we talked about that they were having the majority of the spinning workshops were owned by females. Even in this, uh, uh, this the males uh, went to court to say that they have monopoly and we need any solution for that. So this was their status and this was their influence on every aspect of life. Apart from text workers, women in the neighborhood had their own mills and bakeries. Uh, so if you will see that uh, they had their contribution in every aspect of uh, life, in every domain, due to the framework of no gender discrimination, these Bajani room were able to con uh, contribute as much as AHI organizations because they were uh, created by male and they were created by ladies. By this non-discrimination, they were able to contribute in equal parts. They, after completing the education of women, they trained them, they let them their own, uh, they didn't let them to do their own, uh, just to leave them without any uh, care. They were constantly monitoring the ethical business. After teaching them, after training them, they were constantly monitoring them to have the good quality of products, to give the service which they provide in well way. So, if you will see nowadays, we can see it the chamber of chambers of commerce. Nowadays, Dr. Which, Bashir, uh, four minutes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I am going to close soon. So, in this era, there are uh, a lot of uh, things which ladies had done in socio economic uh, 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 spheres. Uh, middle in middle ages, any women also served served the prosper, uh, purpose of providing work and employment. It is also regarded as the beginning of women's entrepreneurship for the prospects. So this is also the one of the main uh, 
well do, well doing by them these groups were also giving education and moral uh, uh, moral uh, these educational and now if you will see below are three examples of these numerous works which have been done by royal uh, ladies after that it was uh, uh, followed by the other ladies who uh, also contributed in work and we can see that the work was 20 to 30 percent of the all the philanthropic foundation were formed by the Uthman women in 18th century. So if we see this, uh, so they were not even in this uh, lagging behind. So contribution in internal security, this is the last topic. If you will see in here Hisba system, they were having their own Hisba system because they, they provided for this uh, ladies market were different there was not they were not allowed uh, men to go in that market because mostly men were on wars and ladies were alone at home they had to go and uh, do their business and purchase there so it was just separate for ladies and there was a hisba system also for malpracticing misconduct as same in uh, ahi uh, groups So nowadays, if you will see his bar system, is it, it is consumer protection system. So that time they were protecting their internal affairs by this consumer system protection also. Uh, participation in the protection of state. So they also participated in the protection of state. They were fighting. They were uh, a good, capable. Uh, the ladies were capable to fight, ride, shoot, and archer. Also, they were hunting. So in that all way, they were able to give back to their husbands to fight also in wars. Even they uh, fight for the Mongolian invasion, the, against the Mongolian invasion, like a guerrilla group supplying troops with necessary like socks, necessities like socks, clothes, and other logistic support. Uh, the women also indirectly secured the state for the emerging of uh, criminals and he was by diluting the extreme solution by teaching situation by teaching and providing jobs so what they they were teaching they were giving moral training they were providing jobs so they saved indirectly the society from these harm these criminal criminal things the ahi, uh, ahi women created an organization in middle age that helped other women find jobs so they also created uh, which we can say the job portal that time <laughs> a woman in security field uh, so there were women in security field also which participate in the time of late Uthman period and dated from the general directory of security shows that the 16th april 1880 aisha hanam and daughter of bara was assigned as a guard at the zipton uh, prison so it was followed by other women uh, to uh, be as a security guard in ladies' prison. They were also providing, uh, uh, guarding, providing food and health care to that ladies' prisoner. Uh, the women were involved in custom clearance processes also uh, from the ship, which were coming ships or boats. They were also there uh, to provide the custom clearance uh, uh, services. If the woman was uh, suspected that she is smuggling or smuggling something, then lady was going and searching them. So they worked on ports also. Uh, Turkish intelligence uh, began with the Gupta Hans and Kara Khans and Saljuks, but Turkish spies have operated for hundreds of years. These spies were first. They were thieves and other people who were knowing these criminal things, but later on they reverted to Islam and they shunned these uh, bad practices. After that, they were used as an intelligence uh, or uh, people. So they also, there were men and women both, which they were used in these intelligence agencies. And they were also having the uh, experience of the that thing. So contribution in military operations, as I said, that they were as guerrilla organizations during war, war time, and they were providing and supplying the war supplies to their men, as well as they were present in battlefields. Uh, last one in this, this has, these were the some uh, concepts of uh, Western people who were saying that the Uthma, uh, these uh, when these Uthman, why these Uthman ladies are so much uh, Dr. Bashir only uh, one this is last slide, okay. sir, last slide. 
So women live, uh, the concept of women and what they believe, Uthman women, they believe that women live and die as men do. They can be officers, if not uh, masters. Uthman women do not appear in ballrooms or gard gardeners, but in schools and battlefields. So these women were preferring to be in schools and battlefields as to provide the backing for their society. Okay. Apart from its occidentalism uh, aspects, the scene where the Christians are in the palaces waiting for the Arab invaders is also used to examine the debate uh, regarding the function of women in an army. So these Christians were, or these Western people were also debating this somewhere, saying that there are ladies in the, uh, about, uh, there are ladies in the, their army, so it is easy to fight them, but others contradict this. They said, if ladies are able to resist, so you, it is not easy to uh, fight with the, such a nation. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bechit. Uh, your presentation uh, is important. Uh,